Hello guys, this is Nova Barrett, and welcome to a new episode of Creepy Pasta Stories and Info. Today, I will be reading the Creepy Pasta Clockwork. Your time is up, and it was requested of me. I'm not sure if this is the Creepy Pasta they wanted, or another one that I found on the wiki, which is pretty eh. But this is about a girl, and it's very, very Tiki Toby esque, in which a girl goes batshit insane. And well, it's it's essentially all the all the same sort of stuff from uh, Tiki Toby. It's it's a relatively good thing. I might split it into two parts, maybe. But you know, my ear is really itchy, so I, it depends on uh, how I feel. I'm actually really tired right now, and that's why I'm in bed with a laptop. Uh... All right, glasses. I forgot I can't read or we'll see. Or anything. Hang on, give me a sec, I'm gonna clean my glasses. Alright, I'm back. Cleaning glasses is hard. So, like I said, Tiki Toby esque. It's extremely Tiki Toby esque. And Tiki Toby was a really good creepy costume, and um, I really enjoyed reading that. It was. It was entertaining. Let's, oh, it's not really entertaining. Whoa. Well, entertaining of the. Oh, fuck it, let's get reading. <coughs> a little girl sat in her room. Her messy brown hair was pulled into pigtails and her hazel eyes stared at the door. She hugged her stuffed giraffe close to her little body and listened closely to the loud yells of her father and mother. I never should have had any damn kids, screamed a loud deep voice. All I do is make messes, complain and draw on the walls. She was cut off by the high angered yells from the girl's mother. They're children, David! They don't know any better! Oh, fuck me, Mary Beth. I don't want to hear your bullshit excuses. I have had just about enough of them. And what do you plan on doing about it? The girl heard footsteps coming toward her room. She hugged her drive closer. The door was violently opened, and there in the hallway stood her large, angry, overweight father. In one of his meaty hands, he held a large textbook. Stop it, David! screamed her mother, but the father ignored the, his wife's pleading and cries. Give me a second, I have to do a thing. He grabbed the little girl by the collar, and she screamed and kicked, trembling and shaking with fear. The girl's father harshly held up the textbook. This is for drawing on my fucking walls, you little bitch! Amazing parent parenting, clearly. Years later, a little girl known as Natalie was 17 years old. Like usual, she stayed in her room watching TV. Her dad was ranting on and on about some economic crap that she didn't, really couldn't care less about while she munched on some popcorn. She was also currently drawing a picture. There was a little bit of gore in it, but she liked drawing blood. It seemed to give some weird satisfaction. Other than that, multitasking was no problem for her. It became apparent to her, at a young age, after having to do so much hard work and labour, she was able to do everything at once. Drawing ended up being her talent and passion, and it was her way of escaping from reality. We're here. She looked at a large sign in the school that read, Walkerville, Walkerville Institute for the Creative Fine Arts. She sighed tightly and stepped out, putting her backpack on her shoulder. See ya, she said, clicking the car door. She walked into the school and chatted with a couple of friends until she went up to her locker on the third floor. She grabbed her books, and before the five minutes of time was over, she ran to class. Her English teacher annoyingly out her hand on Natalie's desk. Where is your assignment, Miss Ouellette? Ouellette? Oh, Fuck it, I don't know. Natalie swallowed. I, um, I forgot her phone. The teacher growled and stood up. Your time is up, Miss Ouellette. Don't disappoint me. Natalie seemed puzzled by the thought for a moment. She didn't know why, but those words seemed to melt through her. She simply ignored it and went back to listening to the lesson, falling asleep. Not too long after, of course, later that day. She was heading to her locker by fourth period. Or fourth period, sorry. And suddenly, her boyfriend, Chris, came up to her. Hey, talk to me after school, okay? She smiled lovingly at Chris, though strangely she didn't expect anything. He was always a sweet guy. During her French class, 
She preferred not pay attention. Instead, she doodled the things she loved to draw. Blood, gore, people being stabbed and knives. Other people said, pretty dark. I've heard draw that sort of thing. But she saw nothing wrong with it. For a strange reason, it was almost normal to her. Miss all that. She quickly covered her drawings on her paper and looked up at her French teacher. Yes? He gestured her to move her arm with a slight turn of his head. Show me your work. She hesitantly moved her arm to show her the picture of someone being stabbed. The teacher stared, puzzled, looking at her a bit. She smiled nervously. Erase that and get started on your work, she said in a calm tone. He walked away as she sighed and erased the picture. And Miss Ouellette, she looked at him. Your time is almost up. Get on getting your work done. I suggest doing it now. She grabbed at the remark. Time always seemed to be against her. As far as she cared, time can go fuck itself. After class, she walked out of the school to find her boyfriend standing near a fence by a sidewalk. She smiled and walked over, hoping her day could at least cheered up by him. Uh, but as, soon, as she walked over, her smile faded. And, I can talk! Shut up! He wasn't smiling back. Chris, what's wrong? What did you want to talk about? Natalie, I think it's time that we... It's time that we should see other people. She, she felt her heart break. But why? He gave a stern look. It's your mindset. Your drawings, they creep me out. I think it's something wrong with you, and the saddest part is... Why haven't you told me you're acting like this? It makes me feel irresponsible, so I just can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. And with that, he began to walk away. Natalie slammed her hands on the bathroom camera at home. She stared at herself in the mirror, her eyes twitching. I won't hurt myself like the others. I can stay strong. There was a needle and black thread in her hand. It's pointless. It doesn't help. Some weird sensation pulled at her subconscious. She chuckled slightly. No, I'm doing this because I want to. She held up the needle and thread at the end of it. She smirked widely. Time is up. Piece after piece, cut after cut. Even through excruciating pain was going through her. She did not whine. She did not whimper. She did not cry. There were no more tears to shed. All she did was smile. The blood from the piercings made a low, dripping noise from the sink and onto the counter. When she was finished, she stood back and admired her handiwork. She stroked the horrendous stitches. She stroked the horrendous stitches on the side of her mouth that spread into a wide smile. She felt the warm, wet blood of her on her fingers and licked it gently, consuming the metallic taste of liquid in pure ecstasy. She stopped when she saw her mother's reflection in the mirror behind her. In the mirror, behind her mother's wide eyes and pale face. She suddenly felt the pain and cried, Mom! She had never felt so confused. What just happened to her? Her mother has scheduled some therapy for her. Natalie has gotten rid of the stitches and figured out how much pain it would bring, so she went to the therapist. She made sure her hood was not up, not to let anyone see. What? She sat down on the comfortable leather seat. <coughs> and stared at the blonde-haired woman across from her in silence. Your name is Natalie, isn't it? Natalie just nodded. I'm Deborah, and I'm here to help. Now, tell me, what's some of your problems? Natalie stared. Time. Time has been my problem. Deborah gave her a confused look. What about time? Natalie's hands roughly gripped the leather of the seat. Everything. It makes you live through it, slowly progressing through life. Being controlled by society, only to be tortured. It's a, vi it's a vicious cycle. Every uh, time does not end. It doesn't slow down. It doesn't speed up. It's violence, and you live through it, through the torture, over and over and again, unable to feel, unable to fast forward from it. Natalie had really no idea what she said. She felt she wasn't herself anymore. Could this be because of the, all the things she kept contained? No, it was impossible. But for some strange reason, she liked it. The therapist leaned closer. Sweetheart, I want you to tell me what happened to you. Natalie still stared. There was a long pause. She smoked slightly, and her piercings from the stitches slightly opening in. Why don't you tell me, Blondie? You're the expert. Deborah seemed to have an annoyed look. I can't help you until you tell me what's wrong, Natalie.
Okay, the figure started to tear into the leather seats. Natalie isn't here anymore. With that, Deborah's eyes widened. She got up. I'll be right back. Please sit here. She walked out, leaving her alone. Natalie did not move. She sat perfectly still. Alone. A natural while of waiting and impatience, her parents finally walked in. She stood happy to go, but noticed her parents' expressions. Even her father had a strange, saddened look on his face. Her confusion grew, but she said no words and followed them to their car. On the way there, she thought that she was going to get home, so she started to drift off. Strangely, she heard a dark voice speaking in her dream. It almost sounded like herself, echoing into eternal darkness. Your time is up. She sort of... She shot awake, beads of sweat were rolling down her face. She wasn't home. She wasn't in the car. She was in a bed. A white bed in a white room. She looked to her side, seeing that she was hooked to a heart monitor. She went to get up, but suddenly realized she was bounded to them. Bounded to what? Bounded down! What? I'm... Oh, fuck, I can't talk. She panicked. She tried to struggle, but paused. Hear a door open to her left. A man on a white shirt looked at her, his hands behind his back. You must be very confused right now, I can imagine, but I'm letting you know we're only here to help. Your parents agreed to sign a contract to give you some mental drugs to hopefully help your state of mind. She opened her mouth to protest, but was quickly silenced. You'll be back to normal in no time, just try to relax. He walked over. She tried to move away, but couldn't due to the bonds around her wrist and legs. She carefully took a mask and put it over her mouth and nose. She tried to shake it off, but felt herself starting to slip onto the drugs, and her eyes slowly shut. Suddenly, she woke up. She couldn't comprehend what the hell she was seeing. She was being given multiple injections, even some things being rubbed on her skin. She felt woozy, but very aware of her surroundings. Her heart rate was starting to speed up. The doctors would, the doctors would notice of this. They looked at her. Her seeing. Ah, uh, her oh, no. What? Fucking what? Oh, oh God. One of the doctors was yelling at another. She couldn't understand what they were talking about, but she suddenly felt a rush of adrenaline. Adrenaline. Adrenaline slowly start to slip through her bonds, shaking violently. One of the doctors were going to hold her down, but was suddenly hesitant of doing so. All three of the doctors backed away. She sat on the edge of the bed now and ripped the mask and tube from her arm. She got up, started to stumble. Her breath, her breathing hitched. Her vision was blurry. She couldn't make herself out and suddenly she was she felt severe chain in her chest. She gripped her chest where her heart should be and fell to her knees and coughed up blood to then fell to the floor, completely blacking out. She woke up. She was back in bed and the doctors were sitting beside her. Something went terribly wrong. She didn't know why, but she felt hatred towards the doctor. He took notice of it and looked away. You weren't supposed to wake up while we were giving you the doses. We aren't, so, we aren't sure how it affected you, but we have a feeling that we're going to find out. He paused for a second, before taking out a small mirror. Not looking at her, it happened to have an effect on her appearance as well. She looked into it. She looked at herself in the mirror, her eyes widened. They were completely green. She noticed that she still had the stitch in her mouth, and for some reason, she couldn't help but feel happy. Her heart rate started to increase again. She gave out a low chuckle. The doctor looked in shock, saying that she was already standing over the him. Doctor, she said, still chuckling. He trembled, slightly pressing a button from under the monitor. Yes? Your time is up. Alright, so, I'm going to end it here, because, okay, um, well, it's a good creepy past, don't it's, I don't know how what to say about it. I mean, okay, so I read creepy classes. It's a thing I do, and you've got your good ones, then you've got your bad ones, then you've got your absolutely shit ones, then you've got the really really good ones, but not at all creepy ones, and then you've got that little one in between that's perfect. And this is none of the above. I'm sorry. This is uh, okay. Oh, I'm just reading on into it. There's a lot of gore. Nice! Oh! 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 I like it! Sorry! <laughs> but, the thing is, with this creepypasta, I can usually... Uh, I, do, I do, Well, as a general rule, I can't speak well. I can't read out loud. It's not one of my 
strong points, and just reading this kind of made me go <laughs> like worse than usual. I can usually read out a, a, a little storybook or something like that. I can uh, usually talk really well if I'm not reading, but uh, this this creepy poster in particular. There's something off about it. I don't know, but it's... There's all the spelling mistakes and the grammatical errors that just... That just put me off. Um, actually, I'm not going to end it here. I'm just going to pause it for a minute. Um, because I want to read on. I'm not sure how much longer is left. Hang on. Give me a second, chaps. Oh, no, only a short while left. Um, so... We're going to continue from Your Time Is Up. A loud scream was heard from the halls of the hospital. Fuck! I can do this! A loud scream was heard from the halls of the hospital. Two security guards rushed into the room, kicking open the door. Blood was the first thing that they had seen. Blood on the walls, bed, floor, and even on the ceiling. Natalie had taken the doctor and strapped him down to the bed. His spine was completely snapped as the bed bent almost into a sandwich. Blood poured from his eyes, nose, mouth, and there was a corner. And in the corner was the murderer, happily drawing some gruesome pictures on the wall in blood, followed by the phrase, Your time is up. She slowly turned to look at them. A wide-eyed, crazy grin spread across her face. Hello, friends. Would you like to play? The police quickly pulled out weapons. When she charged at one of them, she was quickly able to dodge a strike. She grabbed the pocket knife and slashed it right across the waistline. Blood and organs flooded out and the police crap collapsed on the ground. The other shook his head with fear, dropping his weapon. She slowly walked up to him and placed the tip of, his, of the knife on his chest. Your time is up. She slowly slid the knife down all the way to his gut. His organs spilled on, out onto the floor and he collapsed. Natalie's mother was sleeping silently next to her husband. She woke to the sound of someone knocking on her door. He got up and walked out of the bedroom to go to open the door. It was pouring outside. She walked up to the door and paused. When she was about to grab the knob, there was a faint sound of laughter. The rain and thunder seemed to be quieter. She pressed her ear against the door. Hello, mother. Natalie burst through the door. Two... What? What? Two knives in her hand. Her mother stumbled back, hitting her, her head against the coat rack. One of the knobs broke into her skull and it bled violently from the back of her head onto the floor. She fell to the ground, paralyzed but still conscious. Natalie towered over her and slowly knelt down to meet the eye level. What? Where? What? Oh, level of her eyes and showed her two knives covered in thick red blood. I was suffering, mother. She ran the tip of the knives across her cheek, cutting it slightly. Natalie tilted her head. You were weak. You did nothing. All her mother could do was shake and gasp constantly, like a fish on a line. Natalie grabbed her mother and gently... S what? Where? And gently sat her down. She proceeded to stand on her bureau and started to make a V-cut into her chest. Her mother only gasped and shook. Natalie knew that she didn't have much time left. She proceeded to forcibly open her mother's chest cavity with a loud crack. Natalie reached inside to grab her mother's heart as it beat slowly in her hand. Its pulses were growing dimmer and dimmer. Suddenly... Wait, what? 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 Suddenly she ripped it out. Blood spreading all over her face, she stared at her mother directly in the eye and as she slowly died. Sweet dreams, she said to her mother's corpse. Your time was up. She put the heart in her mother's mouth, patting her cheeks softly and stood up. She wasn't done yet. Natalie's father, David, had awoken and realised his wife had not returned. His eyes started to adjust to the darkness of the room and suddenly realised Natalie standing on his bedside, smoking crazily with her green eyes slowly and glowing in the darkness. Blood was all over her, and her, the scent was unbearable. She put on a fake sad face. Oh dear, mother's gone. I wonder who will get the money. She suddenly grabbed her father's forehead. That's all you ever cared about, isn't it? That's all you ever cared about. Her father, however, was a fighter, so she, he, he sprung up, grabbed her by the neck and threw her to the ground. He started to stomp on her chest until she coughed up blood. Does it feel good, Daddy? She coughed up more blood. After all, you never seemed to mind doing it all those years ago, did you? He, he narrowed his eyes. You want my daughter? A white smoke spread across her face and she looked at him with her glowing eyes as blood dripped down her face. You're right. I'm not. She tri suddenly tripped him, causing him to fall hard on the floor. She got up, both knives in hand. They say the bigger you are, the harder you fall. She grabbed the pillow and stuffed it in his face and then started to stomp on it harder and harder. 
hearing a loud crack noise after a while. When she pulled the pillow away, his face was gruesomely mutilated. He was whimpering, crying in pain. What's the matter, Daddy? Pain too much for you? She stabbed both knives into his stomach, leaving them there for now, as she ripped one of the large wooden poles from the bed. She set it down, putting all the weight on the body onto the pole. The pole started to squeeze his insides up to his body. He started to gag and blood poured out of his mouth. His breath was silent. She forced herself to pull back on more weight, and suddenly his organs bursted out of his body. The nasty gore piled onto the floor and the sides of his face. Your time was up. Finally, this would be her favourite part. She quietly snuck down to her brother's room, silently opened the door with blood dripping from her mouth. Her brother wasn't in bed, but it was apparent that he must have been hiding someplace. Oh dear brother. She started to walk inside. All I wanted to do was have a little fun. As she stepped in more, she listened closely for any sounds, any breathing. She even sniffed the air for his putrid scent, and the closer she listened, she finally noticed something, a faint breathing noise. Whack! She fell to the ground trembling. Her brother was behind her now, behind her with a now bloody baseball bat. He was glaring down with anger, panting in rage. She tried to slowly get up, but he hit her again. Mother always did like you best. He hit her hard one time, last time before taking a breather. She was pleading heavily, her green eyes drooped, glowing faintly in the darkness. She felt weak and looked closer up to the ceiling. She recalled the days that she had spent in here, being tortured, having to go with it for four years. She felt a sudden rush of energy to her body. She started laughing insanely. Her brother went to hit her again, but she used both of her knives to block. You're going to hell, brother. With a large push, she sent her brother flying over the bed, and he hit his head against the wall. He growled angrily. She stabbed the two knives into his arms, keeping him pinned to the wall. He screamed and struggled. Let's see what we could use here. She started walking around the room and smirked, seeing a butter knife on his bedside. She picked it up and walked over to him. They say the eyes are the softest organs in the body. She licked the knife and looked with horror as she started to dig out his eyes. He shrank loudly and she quickly tied a cloth around his mouth. Now, now, can't have you waking the neighbours. He wasn't able to see anything and the pain was unbearable. Blood leaked violently from his eye sockets. Luke Krivert was now incapable. She picked up a pair of scissors and walked over to him. I think you need to cut loose, brother. She started stabbing the scissors into his gut. He cried out and treated him like an arts and crafts, cutting through his skin like paper. She lifted up his large intestines. You know what I love? Macaroni art. She cut it, started to cut into the intestines to sections. These might be a little too big to fit on a plate, though. She went down to his toes and started cracking, crackling, cracking them off. What? One by one. Next, she snapped off his fingers. He was choking out his own blood, on his own blood now. She pulled the cloth down and blood poured from his mouth. There, there, brother. Maybe this will make you feel better. She stuffed her fingers into his mouth and then jammed it into his throat. He choked and died. Your time was up. The girl, known as Natalie, looked into her room. In the corner, she saw she stuffed giraffe. What? What the fuck? English, I'm sorry. She stared at it, and without a word, she walked into the bathroom. She looked at herself and heard a ticking noise. She looked down and saw a pocket watch. She stared at it. She took out one of the knives, grabbing, grabbed the pocket watch and disassembled the watch until only the small clock was left. Time makes you live through torture, she said slowly. She started to, she started to slowly dig it into her eye as the vision of her left eye grew blurry and red. The eye fell into the sink as she tore it. There was a squishing sound until it felt like the clock fit perfectly in her eye. I am clockwork. The young girl who used to be known as Natalie walked away from her burning house. Inside, the giraffe slowly burned, along with the corpses of her family. Sorry, that was... That was incredible. That was like a... Wow. I mean... Wow. Wow. That was pretty good, actually. I, I must 
must admit, I thought that was going to be worse than ever before, but no, that was impressive. Shit, son. <laughs> I don't even... I don't even know. Like... That's incredible. Wow. Like, how many times do I have to say wow? It's just incredible. Like, wow. This is just turning into like a minute of me saying wow. It's, oh. The English has just been made up for. That was incredible. I'm sorry for doubting you, creepy pastors. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Let me back into your life. <gasps> oh my god, that was. I am. I have to go and push my eyes back into my sockets with a rusty spoon now. This is a fucking incredible wow. <laughs> I'm actually leaning back. Like. It was. Okay, so people. I love that ingenuity. That was... How do I describe it? So thanks for watching, guys. It's been an awful audience. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button right in its face if you really want to. And like and favor and do... Uh, do whatever it is you want to do. This was an amazing crazy disaster and I'm glad to have been able to share... It, share, share shoot shit. See? Like in English. I'm, and I'm glad to have been able to share it with you. It was... So most of it's going to be unnecessary, except for the last part when I was rudely interrupted. People interrupt me and I don't like it. There's another bit. I'm forgetting something. I always forget this. What am I? Oh yeah. This is Nevo Parrot. Signing off.